I'm going to show you an indicator and trading strategy for Bitcoin. This indicator has one parameter, a look back, and the strategy works well across nearly every look back value. It is the modified Donchian breakout. It's a simple and robust trend following strategy. You'll learn how the strategy works, performs, and how the trades behave. The strategy is inspired from the Donchian channel, which is the trailing highest high and lowest low with a set look back. I made two modifications to this channel. First, I used the close price only, so we're looking at the highest close and the lowest close and the look back. My reasoning for this is because the high and low price often have spurious spikes, and in my experience, the high and low prices carry less information than the close. The second modification is only to make visualization more clear. I lag the trailing highest and lowest close values by one bar and reduce the look back by one. This way we can actually see the price close above the channel, making the breakouts clearer. The strategy takes a long position when the price closes above the upper channel line. This position is held until the price closes below the lower channel line. Once this downward breakout happens, the position reverses. The long position is closed and a short position is opened. The short position is held until another upward breakout happens. This strategy always has a position in the market, either long or short. I have this trading view script linked in the description. Here's a Python implementation of the strategy. It starts by computing the rolling minimum and maximum as the channel bounce. It then flags where the price breaks out with a one or negative one for upper breakouts and lower breakouts respectively. And then finally, it rolls forward the last breakouts value. The signal column has a value of one or negative one for each row in the data frame, denoting the strategy's position for the next bar. We'll use this signal column to compute the performance of the strategy. To do this, I multiply the next log return by the strategy's signal value. Here's the code for computing the next log return, and the strategy return is the signal multiplied by the log return. To take into account fees and potentially slippage, I look at how much the signal value has changed from the prior bar, and subtract a fixed amount from the strategy return. A simulated equity curve can be computed by taking the cumulative sum of the strategy return. This isn't a perfect equity curve by any means, but it's a great estimate. To judge the performance of the strategy, I will be looking at performance metrics such as the profit factor, sharp ratio, and sortino ratio. The profit factor is the sum of the winning returns divided by the sum of the losing returns. The sharp ratio is the mean return divided by the standard deviation of returns. This isn't exactly a sharp ratio as I don't include a risk-free rate, and the Sortino ratio is the mean return divided by the standard deviation of the losing returns. The sharp ratio and Sortino ratio are often given at an annualized level, which can be achieved by multiplying by the square root of the number of bars in a year. In this video, we're going to look at the strategy on the Bitcoin Tether pair with a one hour time frame from Binance.com. We'll be looking at data from January 1st, 2018 to September 1st, 2022. And for the strategy, we'll analyze the look back parameter from 12 to 672, which is 12 hours to four weeks. Here is the profit factor of the Donchian breakout strategy for each look back parameter. A profit factor below one means the strategy lost money and above one, the strategy gained money. Here's the sharp ratio, and here's the Sortino ratio. Let's talk about this large cliff we see at the lower values of the parameter. This is here solely because of trading fees. On many cryptocurrency exchanges, the trading fee is 0.1% of the order volume. And to complete a trade, we have to pay that twice, once when we enter and once when we exit. So if the average trade's percentage return is positive, but below about 0.2%, we still lose because of fees not to mention slippage. Ideally, our average trade is high enough to overcome fees and slippage and leave us with some profit. Here's the average trade's percentage return for each look back. This includes both the long and short trades. We can see that the average trade tends to increase with the look back parameter. I think an average trade return of at least 1% is a good target to strongly overcome the effects of fees and slippage. The lowest look back value that achieves this is 48. This average trade graph might make the longer lookbacks appear quite attractive, but the number of trades decreases exponentially as the lookback parameter increases. This is why we use metrics like profit factor to compare lookback parameters, not the average trade. So let's select a lookback value. Generally, when selecting parameters for trading systems, we want to choose values that are stable locally. We like to see neighboring parameters of similar performance and a large margin for error on both sides. 
As a hypothetical example, if a parameter value of 100 had great performance, but values of 99 and 101 were awful, it would suggest that the performance of 100 is not very stable. Ideally, we see a plateau and choose the center of it. We can see a few smaller plateaus in the parameter space, and the majority of the parameter space is essentially one large plateau. The optimal parameter in the past is almost never the optimal in the future, so it really doesn't matter in terms of performance what lookback value we select given it's about 48 or higher. This is why I like this strategy so much. The robustness across parameters is really hard to beat. The higher the lookback value, the less trades we get. So the selection of this lookback can be based on the desired frequency of trades. I'm going to pick 72. Three days is the lookback. This decision is mostly arbitrary. Three days seems reasonable to me. The lookback is short enough to get a decent number of trades, but long enough to get a sufficient average return. Now that we've picked a number, here are some statistics for the trades. The win rate is about 36%, which I know sounds unappealing, but the average winning trade gains 10%, while the average losing trade only loses about 4%. This asymmetry is the nature of trend following strategies. Low win rate, small losers, big winners. Here's a histogram of the trade returns, both long and short. We can see the peak of the distribution is below zero, but it has this bat tail going off to the right. This distribution has a positive skew. Capturing this fat tail is the entire purpose of trend following. The hold rows here show the average amount of time a trade is held in hours. The average hold time for a winner is more than twice as long as a loser. This echoes the old saying, cut your losses short and let your winners run. And finally, I included the max number of consecutive losers to illustrate the pain the strategy can bring. Losing seven trades in a row is not fun and not for the faint of heart. Trading requires discipline and this number hopefully illustrates that. Ultimately, I believe trend following has an edge because it's so hard to trade. Having a win rate of 35% is hard to live with. Losing seven or more trades in a row is psychologically offensive, but those who are willing to do it will reap the rewards. This strategy's performance is not exclusive to Bitcoin Tether. Here's the profit factor across our lookback range for a variety of common cryptocurrency pairs. The profit factors of Ethereum, shown in orange, is stronger than Bitcoin across the parameter space. The strategy struggles at lower lookbacks for Algorand and Litecoin, but overall, the strategy has been profitable at most lookbacks for many cryptocurrency pairs. Here's the trade statistics for Ethereum and for Cardano. This strategy is quite simple, having only one lookback parameter, and it exhibits impressive robustness across a wide range of that parameter on many different cryptocurrency pairs. For systems like this, I've heard the analogy, loose pants fit everyone, but of course they don't fit anyone perfectly either. The simplicity of the strategy makes it difficult to overfit, but its performance will certainly not make you a billionaire overnight. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, hit the like button. Bye.